The mass spectrum for ethyl benzoate is shown below. Which fragment represents the base peak? So we need to know what is meant by the term base peak. So a base peak in the mass spectrum is the tallest peak in the spectrum. So tallest in terms of, of height, right? Not the largest number, but the highest peak. So this is the tallest peak, right? And we can also see that since it's the tallest peak, if we take a look at what that corresponds to, that corresponds to 100% on the scale that we have, which is relative intensity, or you could also see this written as relative abundance. Okay, so at 100%, either relative intensity, relative abundance, um, the peak that you have there is your also your tallest peak. And in this case, we're seeing that it's showing up at 105. Okay, so 105 is the mass to charge ratio. So M over Z is your mass to charge ratio. And in the type of mass spectrometry that we are looking at, that charge is plus one. So it's your mass divided by one, which means that what you're really looking at that 105 is that's the weight of that fragment. Okay, so it is a fragment that, as we said, is at 100% abundance. That's how we know which one to pick out when we see the term base peak. So it's at 100% abundance. And in this particular case, it has a mass of 105. Okay, so now that we know that, one way that you could approach this, and I don't necessarily recommend this, it'll take you a little bit longer, but if you wanted to, you could add up the weights of all of these options, and whichever one weighs 105, then you would know that that's the answer. Okay, so that's one approach. Um, we take a little bit more of a methodical approach that'll get us there a little bit quicker, as long as we understand a little bit about what's going on inside of our mass spectrometer. So we've got our ethyl benzoate, which is what we're starting with. So that's your starting molecule. So when you take this ethyl benzoate, you put it into the mass uh, spectrometer, it's gonna be hit by a high energy beam of electrons. And what that will do is it's gonna knock one electron off of this, of the ethyl benzoate, off of your starting molecule. Okay, so that means you're gonna have the whole molecule, you haven't lost any atoms, but you have lost an electron, which means it's gonna go from being neutral to being positive, and you're gonna have one electron that's left unpaired. So your initially form is this radical cation, and notice it's, it's the whole molecule. So this is what's known as the molecular ion, and we often abbreviate this as M plus, okay? And that's typically going to be the heaviest peak in your spectrum, right? Because if you're starting with the whole molecule and then it's gonna fragment, the heaviest one is going to be your molecular ion. So right here at 105 is the molecular ion. And if you were to add up all the carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens in ethyl benzoate and calculate the weight, you'd find out that it weighs 150 atomic mass units or grams per mole, depending on what units you're using. Okay, um, but 105, so if we were looking for 105, we'd select this option, but we're looking, I'm sorry, 150, we'd select this option, but we're looking for this peak at 105. So we wanna know what has been lost from the molecule. So that's one way to calculate this. If we look at from 150 to 105, we'll see that we're losing 45. Okay, so let's, this is the question we're asking ourselves, is what has been lost from the molecule? Okay, so we know we're losing a mass of 45. So now we don't wanna start just calculating any combination of, at, of uh, atoms that are gonna get us to 45. We wanna look at the structure and think about how this could fragment. Um, so a common fragmentation pattern we see is cleavage alpha to the functional group. So we have an ester, and so what esters tend to do is they tend to cleave the bonds alpha to the carbonyl. So we're probably gonna see some alpha cleavage right here that loses that ethoxy group bring this into view. So that would give you this cation, which can be resonance stabilized. And you're also gonna have that ethoxy group, but that's gonna be a radical, not a charged ion. So that wouldn't be seen, that's what you're losing. This is what would be seen by the detector, the positive charge. So that's one pathway. 
or if we fragmented the other carbonyl bond, right? So we'd lose that phenyl would be the part that we're not going to see. Um, the part that you would see would be the remaining um, cation, which would be this. So because of the resonance stabilization that takes place when you do this alpha cleavage, right? Because we can bring these lone pairs of electrons down in resonance. So I'm not going to draw the resonance structure. I'm just going to indicate that there, that there is one. Okay. Um, that'll stabilize it. So I'd expect that either this or this is going to be our major fragment. Um, so you can, you can add up the weight of the charge fragment. You can add up what, the weight of what's lost. Either way, you can get there. So 45... 45 is definitely not that benzene ring that's being lost. That whole benzene ring weighs 77, so that's not it. But this ethoxy group, if you add up the weight here, this weighs 45. Okay, so what we're losing here in this major fragmentation pathway is you're losing the ethoxy group to get this as your stabilized cation. If you add up the weight of that, it weighs 105.